गुड इवनिंग एवरी मैन आई थिंक माई विंडो इज नॉट सीन गुड इवनिंग एवरी मैन आई होप यू गाइज आर डूइंग सेफ प्रैक्टिसिंग सेफ डेंटिस्ट्री वी हैव अ वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक फॉर टूडे and the topic as we all know is minimum intervention dentistry in everyday clinical practice we have our esteemed speaker dr rp daswani for the same and we really thank her uh, for accepting our invitation to speak on the same so the topic is something uh, which is very very interesting because uh, we really don't need to drill each and every stained fissure we have to uh, concentrate on preventive and prophylactic dentistry as well this is what the whole session which is going to last for an about an hour is going to elaborate about and we want you to start posting your doubts so that uh, our speaker dr rp can help you uh, solve the same and coming to introducing our speaker dr rp has graduated from vnt dental college in the year of 2006 she is an accredited member of uh, iaacd as we all know she has her own dental clinic known as uh, divine smiles uh, which was established in the year 2011 she also is an academician and she has her own uh, academy by the name of uh, divine smiles academy and she uh, he, uh, runs courses and helps people educate the and she also has her own uh, she's authored a textbook known as uh, short clinical textbook of endodontics so we are really really uh, happy to have her on board today uh, welcome dr rp uh, it's a pleasure to have you here so over to you now thank you so much dr preeti for a, such a kind introduction i'll just share my screen I hope you are able to see my screen. Uh, Dr. Preeti, are we good to go? Are you able to hear me? Very clear. I yeah. have muted myself. <laughs> okay, and uh, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Yes. Please go ahead. Okay. Okay. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Preeti, for such a lovely introduction. Uh, I'm Dr. Arti, and I'm here to speak about minimal intervention dentistry. So, coming to the uh, lovely group called Everyday Dentistry, uh, it's a great initiative by Dr. Preeti and her team. Uh, I read about it. It's a Facebook group which is open for discussion of cases that we do in daily practice. So, to show how we are changing everyday dentistry. into extraordinary dentistry by providing better and more predictable outcomes to the challenges we face every day uh once again uh, great job dr preeti and her team so before i start my presentation i would like to thank almighty god my sadguru bhagwan ji my family and my friends a special thanks to dr avjit banerjee dr indrajit ghosh dr siddhi prabhu for guiding me in making today's presentation also a special mention of dr shruti goel for sharing her contributing one of her cases okay so as we come to the year 2020 this pandemic has led us to think it has led us to introspect introspection of our lives introspection of our profession because la uh, first 3 months of the lockdown we were at homes not practicing dentistry and that led me to introspect how i am practicing dentistry so i asked questions such as is our dentistry helping patients in a true sense why few patients keep coming back to the clinic with new cavities every now and then 
Uh, I have uh, about two or three very loyal patients who have been my patients since a decade. And I wonder, like every six months, every one year, when they're coming for a follow-up checkup, they come with some new cavity. So I used to wonder, what is that that is making them develop cavities again and again? In spite of doing some treatment to, for them, it's not getting cured. So drilling and filling and whatever we are doing is not helping our patients. So my question was, how do we help our patients remain free from oral problems all their life? So uh, as we know about the restorative cycle of the tooth, I would like to elaborate on this. A patient with a healthy tooth develops dental caries. This dental caries, uh, with this dental caries, the patient comes to a dental clinic and we do some kind of a direct restoration for the patient. But it has a finite life. So after a few years, uh, the patient comes back to us and the tooth now undergoes a replacement restoration. Um, maybe a few years later, the same tooth is now subjected to root canal treatment along with a crown. And one fine day, the tooth is extracted, followed by an implant. In fact, there are so many patients who come to us during the stage where it directly requires a root canal press a crown or some of the patients, they come to us when it is actually the time for extraction and implant. So uh, how do we prevent this kind of destruction that is happening in the tooth? So during the lockdown, I came across uh, this person called uh, Dr. Professor Avijit Banerjee from King's College, UK. And uh, I read his articles in the BDJ, the British Dental Journal, about uh, a topic which is minimally invasive dentistry. I started becoming more uh, interested in this topic. And in one of his articles, he mentioned that uh, this adversity, this pandemic has given us an opportunity to change. He has mentioned this line, through such adversity, comes the glimmer of opportunity to change and develop new strategies and mechanisms to deliver better oral healthcare programs. Dr. Professor Avijit Banerjee is the author of these two books, which talk about minimally invasive dentistry. And he also uh, conducts a program which is called as AMID, which is Advanced Minimally in Minimal Intervention Dentistry, which is a three-year MSc program. So I got in touch with him and uh, as we started discussing about MID, I uh, started reading about it more from uh, many other books. So I found that this is the topic which is uh, very relevant during this time, especially as we ahead from the pandemic towards a normalcy, let's do dentistry in a better way, in a different way. So in, a, in one of his books, I found this line which gave me the answer to all the questions that I was looking for. He said that minimal intervention dentistry aims to prevent the cycle of the destructive restorative dentistry. That cycle that I showed you, that destructive cycle is being prevented by MID. So let's uh, go into the details of what is minimal intervention dentistry. To summarize into a one line, minimal intervention dentistry is a philosophy of professional care that deals with prevention and control, earliest detection, earliest cure, and whenever some treatment has to be done, it has to be minimally invasive treatment. So here, I would like to clarify the terminology. Some people, they use the uh, term minimally invasive dentistry and they uh, uh, use, it, uh, use a short form MID. And some people, they call the minimal intervention dentistry as MID. So according to the books, according to Dr. Professor Avijit Banerjee, this MID, which is minimally invasive dentistry, is just a phase of the entire protocol that is minimal intervention dentistry. So for ease of communication, uh, henceforth, I would be referring the minimal intervention dentistry as minimal intervention oral care, that is MIOC. So we must understand that minimally invasive dentistry is just one aspect of the entire philosophy that we are looking for, which is MIOC. So the MIOC philosophy has four interlinked phases. The first phase 
is identify so as the patient comes to our clinic we need to identify we need to assess the risk of the patient to develop dental problems secondly once we have identified we see to it that we have to uh, control the disease and prevent it thirdly in case if we see that there's a need to do some treatment it has to be minimally invasive dentistry and the most important part of the meoc philosophy is a recall we have commonly heard that the recall of the patient should be every 6 months but let's see how meoc philosophy differs so the 10 commandments are the 10 rules of behavior which according to the bible people should obey or which are called as divine rules uh, here i want to confess that i am not here to talk about religion and i don't want i don't intend to hurt the sentiments of anybody by talking about the 10 commandments but yes i would like to use this term 10 commandments or the rules for the meoc philosophy so the first commandment is that the patient's health is in their hands so uh, we have to make the patient realize that only if you take the responsibility of your oral health of your oral care then only our dentistry will help you so if you do very good restorative dentistry and if the patient is not maintaining the oral hygiene he is not taking care of his oral health then even the best dentistry would fail so we have to first understand our professional people have to understand that the patient's oral health is in their hands and we have to make the patients understand the second philosophy i mean the second commandment of the meoc philosophy is that it is a holistic team care approach so no longer it is only a dentist job it is led by the dentist by the entire oral health care team which would include our receptionist our dental assistant all the staff which are uh, a part of our team so how does our team help the patient Uh, the role of the uh, oral health care team is first of all the standard uh, treatment that we give the standard care then we have to educate the patient and we have to encourage the patient to take responsibility not only this we have to see to it that the patient adheres to the regime that we have given them the third commandment is that the meoc philosophy it focuses on the prevention of oral diseases so the primary prevention is in the form of standard oral care that is uh, tooth brushing and uh, how to maintain the oral hygiene we have to uh, tell them secondly it is by the mineralization control there are special fluoride toothpaste which are available and thirdly we have to see to it that we uh, guide the patient regarding the diet so we have to understand what is the importance of the diet in causing dental cavities the second prevention is uh, by means of pit and fissure sealants and by raisin infiltration if at all we have to intervene we have to do minimally invasive way the fourth commandment is early detection of dental caries here i would like to uh, mention that see uh, with our naked eye we can't see very small incipient lesions so it is para amount that we use magnification of some amount at least if not the dental microscope at least we should start away with dental loops 2.5x or 3.5x is good enough to start with also uh, these kind of very uh, these kind of hidden cavities would be visible only on a iopa and best on a bite wing view so these are important aids that help us in the early detection of dental caries so uh, when the patient comes to us as i mentioned that we have to evaluate the risk of the patient to develop the caries here we have a tool wherein we uh, make a chart and we enlist all the factors such as the caries activity the demineralized areas what is the family history how is the maintenance of oral hygiene of the patient whether he has a, a, enough amount of fluoride exposure and all these things we note down and according to a patient we make a individual treatment plan into uh, we uh, categorize a patient into a low risk patient moderate risk patient and a high risk patient coming to the fifth commandment of meoc it is training patients to disrupt the plaque biofilm so our basics in dental college we studied that the, the dental caries or be it any dental uh, periodontal problem the main causative factor is a plaque biofilm so uh, we always have to take this into consideration the plaque biofilm and 
we should be able to explicitly explain it to the patient that unless and until they disrupt the plaque biofilm uh it we won't be able to achieve oral health in its toto the th the sixth commandment is that uh whenever you see a stained pit of fissure whenever you see some kind of demineralization don't be in a hurry to take out your hand piece and drill and uh, start drilling the tooth we have to remember that the demineralize the imbalance between the demineralization and the remineralization cycle leads to dental caries so in the initial stages we are able to arrest this caries yeah, this is a diagrammatic representation where you see that uh, uh, the from uh, the bacteria which are present in the dental plaque they combine with the fermentable carbohydrates and result in demineralization of the tooth but the good news is that our saliva contains calcium and phosphate and when we uh, supplement it with the fluoride in the external form such as toothpaste which the patient uses at home or we apply the fluoride application at the clinic it helps in the remineralization or the tooth repair so remember that without any restorative intervention the small incipient lesions can be arrested and it uh, if the patient is willing to maintain excellent oral hygiene and change in the lifestyle now uh, the seventh commandment if there is that is uh, if only if there is need to restore the caries lesion then only go ahead and whenever you do so do it minimally invasive way so earlier the dental caries was treated as gangrene so the surgical treatment of gangrene is basically the entire thing has to be ex excised Uh, but no longer we don't excise the entire thing uh, the gv blacks extension for prevention is obsolete now the minimally invasive dentistry repairs or restores only the damaged or the defective tooth structure directly in order to maintain the pulp vitality function and aesthetics so there has been a paradigm shift earlier the gv black uh, philosophy was extension for prevention wherein like uh, Uh, the margins were placed in the self-cleansable areas. Then came the era of minimally invasive dentistry, wherein by external application of fluoride, we we were able to achieve remineralization in the contact area, and we were doing some kind of preventive composite raising. The future is prevention of extension. So the future is that no longer will there be any need to do any kind of treatment if the patient comes early to us. we would be able to achieve the remineralization or the protection to the tooth by means of calcium phosphate fluoride and hydrox hydroxyapatite the eighth commandment of the miyok philosophy is the golden triangle so the golden triangle of the mid for the success of any kind of mid treatment we need to understand and appreciate the interplay between these three factors the apex of the triangle is tissue histology the dental biomaterial science and the clinical handling of not only the patient and also the materials so in histology we need to understand how does a sound enamel look like what is the process of demineralization remineralization what is the difference between affected dentin and infected dentin and how is the histology of the caries enamel in the chemistry we need to understand that uh, whatever materials that we are using Uh, how do they work if we are using some kind of adhesive dentistry we need to understand our bonding agents we need to go back to the manufacturing instructions that comes with the uh, materials that we buy read them and then only use them in the clinical handling of the patients and the material it is paramount it is very important that we do isolation using rubber dam uh thanks to the covid times that most of the clinics have accustomed they have started using the rubber dam and as i mentioned earlier magnification plays a very important role so coming back to some basics of affected dentin and the infected dentin uh the differences the inner caries dentin is called as a affected dentin the outer caries dentin is a infected dentin so we need to understand that the infected dentin is the one which contains the microorganisms whereas the affected dentin does not have the microorganisms clinically how do we differentiate between the affected and infected dentin first is with the by means of tactile sensation uh, we need to take a sharp explorer or a excavator and we will see that the superficial layer which is soft and leathery in consistency which is usually dark brown in color is the infected dentin and the deeper layer with a hard consistency 
which is usually light brown in color is the affected dentin when we use a caries detecting dye the infected dentin will stain bright red in color and the affected dentin will stain light pink in color so the infected dentin what is the histology the collagen which is there inside the uh, the dental uh, uh, dentinal tubules is irreversibly denatured in case of a infected dentin so it has to be removed whereas in case of a affected dentin the collagen is reversibly denatured so there is a possibility that we can remineralize the affected dentin coming to the ninth commandment of the miyok philosophy which says that see we have done some kind of restoration for a patient in a particular tooth and we have to see to it that that restoration is maintained for a very very long period of time so uh, the philosophy states that there is the minimally invasive 5 hour concept of the miyok philosophy for maintaining the long term uh, maintenance of the restorations so uh, when the patient comes back to us for a recall we need to check the restoration if the restoration is having only minor defect and we see that there's not much of plaque biofilm stagnation on it just review the restoration no need to do anything to the restoration if the restoration has small defect along with some kind of plaque stagnation as well then we have to refurbish the restoration that is by means of abrasive polishing disc and burrs just touch it up and do the refurbishment if the patient has a restoration which has some kind of non carious but a defective margin gap or surface then here we would apply some sealant such as a flowable resin adhesive system to prevent the ingress of plaque and the resultant caries and if the patient's restoration has a small kind of defect restor defect in the restoration then we might have to add a little bit of restorative material to restore the failing restoration and only if we see that there is a complete like lot of destruction in the, the there's progress of caries inside that restoration then only we need to replace the restoration so the five hours are review refurbish reseal repair or replace so this is a little bit of con controversial thing because more many dentists they would feel that if the patient is having a, a old restoration especially which the dentist himself has not done uh, they would feel that i would like to repeat them but uh, going the minimally invasive way uh, it has to be uh, first reviewed uh, if the tooth has to be the filling has to be given a chance to stay there in its position and only if we feel that it is not salvage it is not uh, it's quite destructing and then only we have to repeat it the 10th commandment is that the recall of the patient is an important domain of the miyok philip framework so as i mentioned earlier we had uh, this fixed uh, protocol that every 6 months we are going to call our patients back for follow up but uh, the high caries risk patient needs to be recalled even after 2 months or maybe 3 months every 2 to 6 months and if the patient has some kind of low caries risk then the patient may be recalled every 6 to 12 months when the patient comes back to us we need to check the restorations whether they are stable we need to see whether there is any evidence of lesion progression on the radiographs we need to check whether the dietary risk factors are still present we need to check how is the oral hygiene that the patient is maintaining and uh, uh, we need to also in uh, question the patient we need to check with him whether he is maintaining the home care by using high fluoride toothpaste mouthwashes and whether they are helping the patient get rid of the uh, dental problems and we need to see to it that whatever uh, preventive advice that we have given to the patient whether the patient is following that advice so uh, once again to summarize these are the 10 commandments of the miyok philosophy uh, most of us uh, would realize that i have not spoken something new it is just a revision of uh, all that we already know but it's just to reinforce this idea and to implement it in our daily practice so patient's oral health is in their hands Miyok philosophy is a holistic team care approach. It believes in prevention of diseases, early detection, and in the patients to disrupt the plaque. We need to we need to arrest the carry initial caries by uh, instructing the patient to make changes. And whenever we have to intervene, we have to do it in a MID way. We also understood about the golden triangle of MID. which is uh, we need to understand about the tissue histology 
the materials and the clinical handling of the materials then we understood how to maintain the restorations for very long long time by the 5r concept and the recall so going ahead with the topic of the day that is after getting a brief introduction of what is a miyok philosophy we see what is the minimal intervention dentistry that we see in the everyday clinical practice so we uh, have seen that in our clinic there are patients uh, a group of patients who have most of the teeth are in a healthy condition uh, there are few patients who have uh, some kind of incipient caries which is developing the third group of patients is a pa uh, one who has come with a uh, uh, complain that there is some food lodging inside a cavity the patient has appreciated that there is some kind of cavity in his tooth which is a moderate then there are few patients who develop lot of sensitivity to uh, cold and they come to us with a big hole and they say that there is a deep cavity in my tooth and we actually see on the radiograph that there is deep caries in their teeth then we have a uh, uh, the, the teeth which are actually involving the pulp then we have a special uh, group of patients which are my favorite uh, they are the patients which come or uh, with some kind of aesthetic demand they come to us with uh, improvement in their smile they want to design their smile they want to uh, look better they want to improve the way their smile looks so when the patient is coming with some kind of caries let's see how do we treat it minimally invasive way so the preventive procedures include fluoride treatment and pit and fissure sealants the minimally invasive management of caries we would see uh, how do we manage the incipient caries and the deep caries then uh, one uh, very broad uh, topic of the minimal in intervention dentistry is minimally invasive endodontics mie which is not the in the scope of today's lecture but we will also uh, look into the minimally invasive aesthetic dentistry so starting with the preventive treatment as i told you about fluoride so earlier we thought that uh, the fluoride is very helpful for uh, uh, kids for adolescents but actually if you go to see the studies have shown that the fluoride application can reduce the caries increment in the deciduous dentition by 1/3 and in the permanent dentistry by nearly half because fluoride is a mineral which helps in the remineralization of the incipient caries lesions the white spot lesions and it can be beneficial in controlling the caries in high risk patients so uh, there are uh, two ways in which we can help the patients with the fluoride one is uh, in the home use and second is professional application of fluoride so for the home use we can ask them to use uh, uh, the uh, we can check whether their water contains enough amount of fluoride we can ask them to use a fluoride containing toothpaste mouthwashes uh, when we have to apply the fluoride professionally uh, we have fluoride varnishes we have we, we can apply fluoride in the gel form or we can uh, uh, do some injecting uh, way of fluoride Uh, but the, uh, we need to understand here that the fluoride that we apply to the patient's teeth won't last permanently it has to be repeated every 3 to 6 months so the uh, protection that the fluoride will offer would only be limited to about 3 months to about 6 months second we come to the pit and fissure sealants uh, this is especially helpful in the highly caries active adolescent uh, population for sealing all the erupting molars and also it is quite effective in the high risk young adult patients so whenever we see the patients having very deep pits and fissures uh, it's a good idea to seal them with the pit and fissure sealant another term in this that you need to know is the preventive raise and restoration uh, after minimally invasive excavation of the occlusal caries uh, the cavity is restored with the adhesive restorative material here we can uh, follow it with some kind of preventive resin based fissure sealant as we did in the pit and fissure sealant and we need to seal the susceptible occlusal fissures so this sealant along with the restoration that we did is termed as the preventive resin restoration now uh, when the patient is coming up with some kind of caries uh, initial caries or maybe a moderate caries or some kind of deep caries how do we manage it so the these are the ways the mechanical excavation of caries can be achieved either by the rotary instruments that we use daily in our clinics the burrs in the hand pieces 
or by non rotating instruments such as hand instruments or there are newer ways such as air abrasion aqua care air water abrasion sonics and ultrasonics also the newer method is a chemo 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 mechanical removal of carious dentin by using a gel called caridex which is 0.1% hypochlorite gel also lasers can be used for the photo ablation method of dental uh, caries removal and some have also used the ozone therapy uh, in everyday clinical practice it may not be practically possible for us to use the newer equipments because of economic issues so let's see the basic burrs the, uh, the rotary instruments that we use for removing the caries so th this is a very very good uh, burr from ss white the fish rotomy carbide burrs these the time that i have i have started using them they have actually uh, brought about a like it gives you a lot of satisfaction that we are not drilling the tooth much it actually helps in minimally invasive cavity preparation if you see they are so thin they are quite thin and uh, if you compare it with the smallest of round burr you see the difference that how much we were drilling before we were aware of these kind of fish rotomy carbide burrs uh important thing is that it is made up of carbide uh, not the regular stainless steel or the diamond points that we are using so it minimizes the heat build up now when there is a minimization of the heat build up vibration the sensitivity is also reduced post operative sensitivity is reduced in this fish rotomy burrs there are these three varieties uh, the original fish rotomy burr then there is uh, the burr which is popularly called as a ntf burr which is narrow tapered fisher burr it is used for conservative pit and fisher exploration of the adult molars the stf which is a shallow tapered fisher burr is used for the premolars and for the deciduous molars and for enameloplasty uh when the caries is deep there are so so many times that we inadvertently if we are using our round uh, stainless steel burrs or the diamond points we might accidentally do the mechanical exposure of the pulp so in order to prevent that uh this is a very good type of burr again by ss white which is called as a ss white smart burrs these smart burrs they are made up of polymer or plastic and they are very very useful in the deep caries lesion they help in the unintentional pulp exposure so uh, how does it work it removes only the infected dentin it is intelligent enough it is smart enough to differentiate between affected and infected dentin i'm just joking it's uh, actually how do they how does it differentiate because uh, it is it it is able to remove the uh, uh, part of the tooth only which is softer than it itself so what happens when it is removing when it's excavating the infected dentin it is able to remove it properly but when it comes in contact with the affected dentin the burr it gives way it breaks so it doesn't break in the i mean it is quite easily retrievable so uh, it breaks and then we come to know that we have reached the affected dentin so infected dentin has to be removed as a burr breaks the infected uh, the affected dentin can be left behind uh, it is a latch type burr which can be used in our regular micromotor handpiece and it has to be used at a very slow speed of 5000 to 10000 rpm it is available in these three sizes 4 6 and 8 but only problem for us is is that it is a single patient use and it has to be disposed of after every use so it comes to around 180 rupees to 200 rupees that we have to spend but it is worth it because it will help us prevent intentional pulp exposure another thing uh, we have completed the rotary instruments now in the non rotary variety we have the traditional hand instruments that we use in this i would like to explain about the concept of a traumatic restorative treatment in which what we do we just use simple hand excavators and remove the carious infected dentin after we remove that we leave behind the affected dentin and we restore it with a chemically adhesive high viscosity glass isomer cement uh this uh, glass isomer cement can be in place as a semi permanent restoration and maybe after few months or uh, some time later we might have to replace it but in this also if the patient is not giving any symptoms then we can remove only 2 mm of it and do a bonding restoration over the already existing gic which is called as a sandwich restoration now in the times when we already have so many good rotary instruments 
and we also have so many uh, newer ways of uh, uh, treating dental caries and why would we use a art treatment uh, the art is very effective in case of very young children in the home bound elderly patients and in the patient which ha who have extreme fear of the drill and also in medical in mentally and physically handicapped patients so even during the lockdown uh, i had uh, the opportunity to go to a few uh, homes uh, where we had elderly patients which were home bound and uh, also our clinics were closed and this technique it really helped me i was able to help many of my elderly patients by doing the art procedure uh, the new way as i told you is one of them is a dental air abrasion this is a dental air abrasion machine Uh, how does it work it is a pseudo it is a pseudo mechanical method wherein like you know the high velocity dry abrasive particles are bombarded and they transfer the kinetic energy to the tooth surface it uh, the powder that we use in this uh, machine it is alumina powder or the bioglass powder particles it is useful for the extrinsic stain removal for removing the selective removal of the demineralized enamel and also for removal of the old composites the advantage of using the dental air abrasion is that there is no heat no vibration no pressure or pain and more importantly no noise is generated uh another current advances in this therapy in the on the abrasion is a aqua care dental abrasion unit uh it is a air polishing system along with the water and it is used for cavity preparation for cleaning that is scaling and for stain removal it enables contact free and minimally invasive dentistry it minimizes the removal of the sound structure and it eliminates the risk of chipping or stress fracturing so now since we know how what what all are the instruments that we are going to use for removing the caries in a minimally invasive way there are few points that you must note uh, when we are doing the removal of the caries first thing is that we there is no predefined shape of the cavity in the mi way uh, like for amalgam we had the predefined uh, cavity shapes class 1 class 2 uh, in order to have the proper resistance form and the retention form but for the modern adhesive dentistry we need not have any predefined shape of the cavity uh, it is important that we use small size burrs such as a fissurotomy burrs to avoid uh, removal of excessive sound tooth structure Uh, the minimally invasive procedure mandates that uh, leave the groove intact unless there is caries on the surface even if it is stained so as dr preeti rightly mentioned we need not drill each and every stained fissure if there is no caries we can just leave it behind as it is another important aspect when we are doing the proximal caries excavation uh instead of making the uh, conventional class 2 cavity preparation it is a good idea to make a slot preparation which is called as a saucer shaped cavity preparation by uh the uh, by dr clark uh another thing is whenever we are doing deep caries excavation uh, it is very important that we go slow and we are very careful always check and proceed check and then proceed here i want to mention that when we are excavating deep caries lesion always give priority to the pulp leave the affected dentine behind in some cases where you would see on the radiograph that the caries is almost approaching the dental pulp but the patient is not having any symptoms clinically you have to go really very slow with a ss white smart burst to that i showed you and to remove the infected dentine leave the affected dentine behind and one important aspect here is that the periphery of the lesion should be histologically sound enamel or dentine so even if the center of the lesion has some kind of uh, caries just leave it behind peripheral seal is the most important so here, here i would like to mention that there is no evidence that the incomplete caries removal is deleterious in fact the reverse is true so the minimally invas uh, invasive dentistry or the mi philosophy a biologic uh, intervention of the large caries lesions reduces significantly the risk of pulp exposure we are here to maintain the vitality of the pulp as long as possible now uh, after after the endo treatment 
uh, as i told you during the endo treatment we also have to do minimally invasive axis cavity to preserve the enamel and when we are doing the biomechanical preparation we have to do minimally invasive uh, even the cleaning and shaping of the root canals uh, so that we preserve the dentin of the root after we are done with the root canal treatment it is not uh, mandatory that all the rc treated teeth should be covered with a full coverage restoration uh, now the philosophy is that some uh, of the teeth which are rc treated can be covered only with a onlay or with a endo crown and the crown full coverage crown can be prevented also the this point that i did not mention is that if the tooth requires the replacement of cusp if the it is a badly carious tooth and it requires some kind of replacement of the cusp then uh, it is a good idea to use a indirect composite or a porcelain onlay on it instead of doing a full coverage crown uh, these uh, indirect restorations can be very beautifully very nicely uh, fabricated with the cad cam technology in the laboratory now coming to what i really like to do in my daily practice it is minimally invasive aesthetic dentistry so the gold, golden rule of aesthetic dentistry is that it is want based dentistry and it is uh, unlike the need based dentistry that we saw when uh, we were treating dental caries so here it is very important to understand what are the desires and the expectations of our patients but uh, nevertheless if the uh, the patients would uh, have different expectations which we might not be able to fulfill so we need to strike a balance by considering the age of the patient the level of the oral hygiene that the patient can maintain how much time is the patient willing to devote for his dental treatment or, and what are the economics of the patient how much is the patient willing to spend on the dental treatment but the uh, bottom line is whenever possible a minimally invasive option should be chosen uh here i would uh, the first uh, very minimally invasive uh, uh, absolutely uh, fantastic uh, minimally invasive adis uh, aesthetic procedure is called as raisin infiltration this can be done in case of uh, fluorosis uh, whenever you see some kind of white spots because of hypomineralization and also post orthodontic treatment once you are or, or once you have removed the brackets you might see that uh, the patient has some white spot lesions so here the flow chart gives you the procedure how we should follow it uh, first you need to clean the teeth with those white spot lesions with pumice and water then apply the icon edge 15% hydrochloric acid for about 3 minutes after 3 minutes you need to apply ethanol this is icon dry and let it remain for 30 seconds after that you need to apply the icon infiltrant so icon is basically a product of the dmg company which is which has this product icon which which is composed of these three uh, it has a etchant it has this icon dry and it has this flowable infiltrant uh, so it is light curable once you remove the excess icon infiltrant you need to light cure it for 40 seconds the icon infiltrant should apply should be then again applied for 1 minute and light cured uh, then you need to polish it like a regular composite so how uh, does it help the refractive index of the icon infiltrant it mimics the surrounding enamel creating the optical illusion of healthy enamel with uniform color and lasting results uh, here is a case by dr shruti goel i would play the video for you to see so i would like to once again replay it so the initial situation as you see 
the retracted view these are the white spot lesions the brownish and the whitish spots on her on the teeth so as i mentioned raisin infiltration is a conservative minimally invasive restorative technique which is used to erase the carious incipient lesions sorry so see the beautiful isolation that doctor has achieved pure uh, cleaning with pure mist and etching with the icon edge after applying the icon dry it is isolated with the matrices then it is uh, left behind for 30 seconds these strips are used to remove the excess after light curing these uh, finishing and polishing is done like a regular composite so see uh, the patient has got rid of this um, white spots that you can see another minimally invasive aesthetic technique is teeth whitening so teeth whitening why is it supposed to be minimally invasive treatment option because there are uh, many times when the patient has yellowish teeth and uh, like in foreign countries like america and europe uh we see that many patients they go to the dentist and they get a full mouth veneer done that those flashy white teeth uh but uh, uh instead of doing such invasive treatments uh it is good that we give the chance uh, to the patient to uh, experience that very nice bright smile by means of bleaching so uh both the home bleaching procedures and the in office uh, bleaching pre uh, treatment are very well accepted and they are known to be minimally invasive cosmetic treatment options to enhance the smile of our patients here are a few of the cases that i have done uh, we would see that uh, in a very uh, minimally invasive way or non invasive way it is possible that we enhance the smile of our patients so the first case is uh, the patient uh, in her teens about 18 or 19 years of age uh, she had this white spot this was done uh, in 2017 uh, that time i was not aware of the icon product the dmg icon otherwise i would have used that so i used my regular bonding procedure and uh, i have done the uh, diastema closure and i have successfully been able to hide this white spot lesion so in this like it is non invasive we did not have to do any kind of uh, uh, preparation on the tooth just the roughening of the uh, surface with the uh, polishing disc and then we go ahead with the bonding procedure again a regular class 4 built up we just have to remove this unsupported enamel the ragged margins and we just do bonding and we are good, uh, the patient has a beautiful smile uh this is a patient uh, who had come only for one visit to mumbai and uh, he had come from out of mumbai so in such uh, quick fix uh, ways are uh, composites uh, he would be between 50 and 60 years of age and i have done a monochromatic restoration for him uh this patient uh, uh very rare like you know this patient came to us and she said that uh, she likes the design of this uh, central incisor and she would like to have a similar design on her other tooth uh, as we know this mammalons they get uh, worn off when we uh, with the biting the mammalons they get worn off so we knew we told her that even after we create this design after a wear and tear after few months or maybe a year or so you'll again have flat tooth surface but uh, she was okay with it she said uh, i want similar kind of design on my other tooth and we did it with the composite bonding uh this is a typical case of a minimally invasive uh, dentistry minimal intervention dentistry wherein this uh, middle aged uh, female has come to our clinic with this yellowish discolored central incisor and the lateral incisor uh, she has a history of trauma uh, in her childhood and um, when she came to us uh, we saw the condition of this tooth uh, periapical x-rays were taken and uh, we found that we had to do the endodontic treatment for both the central incisor and the lateral incisor 
after minimally uh, invasive access cavity preparation was done and the endodontic treatment was completed uh, i did four appointments with the opalescence endo internal bleach uh, uh, during the same appointments i also did the external bleaching with the opalescence boost so a uh, four appointments of the internal as well as external bleaching uh, gave us this kind of a result uh, we were quite happy with the result that came with the lateral incisor it was almost matching the shade of the adjacent teeth uh, although with the central incisor we were a uh, little bit still lagging but the patient was quite happy and she wanted me to stop there we also uh, gave her the option of doing some veneer on this uh, but because of some economic constraints uh, she was uh, she wanted to stop at this Uh, this patient came to our clinic uh, in a government dental college of a particular state. Uh, uh, in her central incisor, some her student had done a silver uh, filling, uh, amalgam restoration. Uh, so when she came to us, what we did, we uh, did a composite bonding for her, and she was quite happy with the disappearing uh, black color of the tooth. Uh, this patient again um, had the habit of biting on her pencil every time she was in stress she said like you know whenever she has some exam or something she keeps on biting on her pen pencil uh, unknowingly so uh, we built up the incisal edge with the composite bonding and we advised her that uh, she needs to stop that habit of biting on pencils or any objects to prevent the further breakage of the incisal edge Uh, this is again a, a regular class four built up of a uh, adolescent boy uh, with a composite. This is uh, the uh, case wherein, like you know, there's a massive transformation in a smile because the diastema is really very very wide. So this also can be achieved with the composite bonding. Uh, although we understand that after doing bonding on all these four teeth, it will have a finite lifespan. It won't last forever. Uh, but uh, we have advised her that to come uh, every six months for the polishing of these restorations, and uh, we always have a chance to proceed with the porcelain veneers at a later date. So whenever the patient's age is between uh, twenty, twenty-five, or even up to thirty, uh, it is advisable that uh, we do minimally invasive, rather non-invasive composite bonding, and uh, only if the patient has very high aesthetic demand. If the patient uh, has a Job in kind of a media, then we might have to do the porcelain, uh, very uh, highly polished uh, porcelain restorations. Otherwise, for regular uh, average people, this uh, composite bonding works wonders. So uh, uh, after this forty-five minutes of what I've spoken um, on a Sunday evening, I would like to thank all of you to attend this on a Sunday evening, or maybe people who would like who would be seeing this recorded. Uh, the take home message is uh, always learn to respect the tooth structure preserve the enamel so always remember that enamel is a gold for us so how the the way we take care of our gold our ornaments take care of enamel whenever patient comes to us we uh, consider enamel as a very precious thing preserve dentine Uh, uh, about this entire miyok philosophy that you have understood uh, let's spread the word about this miyok philosophy to create awareness among general public we need to educate and encourage patients to take responsibility for their own health we need to identify the health problems at the earliest and try to prevent them we need to understand and implement the principles of mid and we always need to recall the patient and reevaluate whether our dentistry is working whether whatever we are doing is helping our patients and whether they are able to achieve the oral health that they deserve uh thank you so much for your attention uh, you can reach me through this email have any questions Thank you, Doctor Arti. My pleasure. It was an amazing presentation. Uh, I think we can stop screen sharing. Should I stop sharing screen? Yeah.
thank you so much for everything and uh, i think we had a wonderful time listening to you thank and you so uh, the whole concept of uh, everything right from the infected and the affected dentin and uh, how important it is for us to save the tooth realize the peripheral seal zone and uh, not every tooth has to be treated for endodontic therapy even though the caries can be deep and a lot of other options which you showed of bleaching iconage not every case has to be uh, treated by uh, only bonding or only veneer there are a lot of options now so it was i think an eye opening session for all of us we have thoroughly enjoyed the whole process and the whole session so thank you so much again thank you my pleasure i think uh, we are not having any questions for now no problem and any i'm sure uh, they can still post it on the group and uh, if you could reply to them later sure so either way uh, our speaker has already shared her email so if anyone's interested can get in touch with her and she'll help you out thank you bye thank you